Hello, and thank you for visiting my channel, Nina Expressions. This channel is dedicated to healing and transformation through the lens of artistic expression. In today's video, I will be chatting with Rod Schichtel, who is a new friend of the Olam Art House. I've been part of the Olam Art House since 2017, when I met John Olam through Goddard College. Rod will be presenting his live visual art at the Olam Art Gala coming up May 9th through the 14th, in New York at the One Art Gallery on 23 Warren Street. The gala is celebrating the 20th anniversary of Olam Art, which is the artistic vision of John Olam and his partner Jim Sable. This year, the theme of the gala is landscapes. Landscapes provides a space where art is not only an object mounted on a wall, but also a magical woodland of diverse artistic entities. If you're in New York between May 9th and 14th, please join us. I'll be performing my newest Urdu poem at the gala on Friday, May 12th. An event link is in the description of this video. Enjoy. Got it. Awesome. So, hello. Please introduce yourself. Hi, Nina. Um, I'm Rod. I am the artist known as Love. Wow, I love that. I, that's how I sign my work now. Um, for many years, I didn't sign anything, any of my pieces. Um, I just um, didn't, uh, wasn't inclined to. And, right, right. Uh, and then once I started using the pseudonym Love, I started signing everything. And then... Um, in the last few years, I've been signing my artwork, Love Cubed. And okay. there's a, Why a little, story, little story behind that. I, um, I'm heavily involved with a retreat center in New York State. Mm -hmm. I've uh, um, been living there for a few years now and have built myself a cabin there. And I now have an art studio that's coming together there next to my cabin. And so it's all very exciting. The um, the name Love Cubed came about. Uh, periodically, we do fundraising auctions at the retreat. Mm -hmm. And I had put a painting in the auction, which um, had the word love in it three times real big mm -hmm. across the front of the painting. Um, and the, the letters of the, the words love were like, an opening looking into the scene and what was painted around the words was uh, just a solid color with other other words tiny little things i like to hide lots of little messages in my artwork right but, right uh, the um the person who had the winning bid on that painting when he accepted it he said oh love 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 that's that's love times love times love love cubed and that is adorable. I, that's how it happened. And it's perfect because, um, you know, something cubed means it's in multiple dimensions. Right. My artwork really is in multiple dimensions because yeah. I put so many layers of things in it. Mm -hmm. And many of them also have an audio track that goes with it. Mm hmm multiple layers of audio messages coming through so they really are multi-dimensional so is the audio also something that you create yes wow that's yes. awesome i will i will create an audio track with multiple layers of me speaking the affirmative messages that are in the mm -hmm. painting that's mm -hmm. sometimes what it is maybe with some background music behind it or not um but yeah, it's an audio and video visual experience. And with most of my pieces now, um, the pieces are actually displayed with the video screen showing a time lapse of the entire creation. So you can see all of those layers of affirmative messages in the painting. That's amazing. Maybe you could, uh, if you would like to, share a sample of that with me and I can put it on this video. Oh, absolutely. So that way people could see what you're what you're describing right now, because I've seen it on your Facebook. 
And um, I, I think it would just be really awesome to have here as well. Yeah, it's, I love the, I love how there's just so much going on at once. You know, not only do you have the multiple messages, but you also have different panels that you're working on. And then you have the film that's kind of going in three different areas. So I think that's also another way of representing your layer, your layering. Right. So, and that comes across really, it's just very dynamic. So can't wait to see it in person. I can't wait to do it in person. Yeah. I'm be, um, right now I'm preparing uh, a big eight foot wide triptych that I will be um, getting to the stage where I've already put many layers of things in it and put a, uh, a raised message in it, which I mm -hmm. also think it paint, but it looks like it's embossed. And... Um, the, the panels I'm bringing to the gala will have a 24 line uh, lyrical verse already in the panels, but you won't be able to see it yet until I do my final image on the canvas. And then that oh, okay. will come out. What day are you actually doing the project live? I am scheduled to do it Wednesday, the 10th. Okay, perfect. Uh, I think at uh, 2 to 5 p.m. I think I will be. Sounds good. That. So that's open. People can come look at your work. Yes. And it's going to be at the One Art Gallery in the Financial District. I will mm -hmm. leave information about how people could find the gala and also find you in the Thanks. description notes of this video. Beautiful. So. Well, I'm, I'm working on trying to get a website basic thrown together before that gala in May. We'll see. I hear you on that. <laughs> but until then, I've got my Facebook page people can see and my Patreon page. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I mean, what I've learned is that whatever channel you choose, it's fine. Like, you don't have to choose all of them. You know, if you have a lot of, you know, followers on your Facebook, that's great. and. I just feel like, yeah, wherever you would like to 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 send people would be awesome. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to tell people what brought us together, as in you and I, what brought us okay. together. So this us meeting was a result of me starting to join John Ollum's weekly Zoom meetings right. for artists. So. I ended up in that because John uh, had had come to the retreat center mm -hmm. where I'm living. and did a workshop to, to do a workshop doing one of our during one of our retreats mm -hmm. and he um, I I think it happened where he saw some pieces of artwork I had a display of artwork in the main lodge building mm -hmm. of the retreat and. He saw those and um, uh, was introduced to me. And um, uh, since he liked my artwork, I offered to show him my studio in progress and the cabin that I built. And um, we really connected deeply. Uh, Jim Sable was with him also. Right. Um, and they they took a look at the uh, the studio, and uh, even though the it's an unfinished space, I couldn't just leave my paintings like stacked against the wall. I hung up as many of them as I could on the the raw walls, and so uh, they walked in and saw a piece that they wanted in the gala. Mm -hmm. They saw and a piece in your studio? They saw one of my pieces that they wanted in the gala, right? And um, of course, I was excited and uh, immediately uh, accepted on the spot. Um, and then since then, um, I did, we had a huge snowfall at the retreat. Right. And I was 
inspired to paint a big winter scene. Yeah. Which also falls into the theme of the gala, which is landscapes, both mm-hmm. internal and external. Right. So they wanted me to put those in the gala. And we had talked, I had asked them if they ever had people do live painting during the gala. Mm-hmm. And they were excited at that idea. And have they ever the, had live painting at the gala? I believe so. Yeah, I, I believe they've this, had live different types of art there since mm-hmm. I've been a part of it. Nice. It's a really nice gala. What? How do you think that being in the gala will represent your mission and vision or will relate to that? Ooh. Um, so what is your mission and vision? Well, my personal mission in life is to spread love through my artwork beautiful um love and healing messages and thoughts um uh, uplifting spiritual concepts i want to inspire people Mm -hmm. um so there's that part of it but the the artwork is also a big part of my own journey healing from traumas Mm -hmm. um Many of the affirmative messages that I put in my pieces uh, come about because I'm trying to compose affirmations that will kind of overwrite negative programming that I took on early in life. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been working with affirmations for a long time, and they're, they're a big part of my artwork. How do affirmations help you? In what way? They are wonderful reminders and pointers, and they um, they bring back my intentions to to live uh, as present as I can be, and you know, centered and um, centered within my my spirit. Um, and recognizing the the truth of who we are, which is we're all magnificent beings, um, rather than some of the messages of unworthiness that found their way into my head early in mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. Wow, so they've been really effective for you. That's awesome. They have been, yeah. I... For the for this piece for the gala, I wrote um, lots of affirmations about how creativity uh, is part of our healing process, right? And tapping into that space within us where we are complete and whole, um, and also artwork can can help. Um, it can help bring things up that are buried under layers inside of us. For things sure. that, you know, a lot of a lot of people when they paint, I sometimes experience this. Um, you know, deep sadness can come up, mm-hmm. and you know, a lot of things can try to find their way back up to the surface yeah. while we're being creative, and there are things that need to be allowed to come up because we've buried them. Yeah, for sure. So this might be part of what you're about to say, but how do you feel you serve the community? I I serve the community by sharing all of the uplifting messages and energy that's in the artwork. Yeah, and, very much so. And by, by being open about um, my own healing journey. Um, Which takes courage. Yeah, I I have come to a place where I can be much more vulnerable and uh and open to share that and when when we do it can it can it can help other people that are going through that. Yeah. And so that's part of that's part of what I'm offering um in the way of uh 
services and things. I I also do um I also make jewelry. Beautiful. And um so I have a a big stock of it's all gemstone and crystals and uh I'm inspired by by stones and their properties and uh, I love to do custom work for people. And Another thing that I offer the community is um, sessions where we do affirmation coaching. Wow. I love to spend time with someone, um, converse about um, the areas of their life that they'd like to see uh, improvement in or, you know, anything where they would like to kind of fine tune um or make big maybe even big changes in their life and um by talking to them and having a dialogue we can together compose uh powerful affirmations for people and then what i do is during the coaching session i have them speak these affirmative statements and coach them to do it with with a lot of power in their voice and i um what we do is kind of um, have them scan back to a moment in life when that affirmation was actually true for them. Yeah, that's huge, right? And reconnect with that feeling while they're saying it as well. And then when I take the recording of that meeting, I go back and I pull out all these little gems of them speaking powerfully these affirmations, and I create for them an audio pro multi-layered audio program with all these powerful statements they're speaking. Then they can listen to that and meditate with it and use it as a reminder of those things. So during your sessions, are there also opportunities for people to do visual or for you to create visual while they're doing their audio or how to, is that a separate thing? Um, yeah, that's a separate thing. I have, a lot. Um, I have actually done custom pieces of artwork for people with a set of affirmations that we composed for them. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think the audio is huge because I think yeah. when people can hear themselves, it's different than hearing a recorded, you know, statement that someone else says. Right. And right. also their own voice, their own energy. Right. And also the big part seems to be, or feels like it would be, actually relating it to a time where they believed that because yeah. I think that was the the, the reason yes. I asked you about affirmations is you know because there are some people who feel like they don't work but it's because yeah they may don't they maybe don't believe it right now but there okay. was a time or there could be a right. time in the future where they do believe it right and most of the time if if we compose an affirmation um in fact, I don't think I can recall any any instances where I asked the person to scan back and find find one moment where that statement was really true for you. Mm -hmm. uh, they've always been able to find that. Is it usually in childhood? Um, often. Yeah. Often, yeah. Mm -hmm. Before they were <laughs> taught who they were supposed right. to be. <laughs> right back when they were actually who they were supposed to be right that's <laughs> that's a big part of it uh of our healing journey is reaching reclaiming, back to, yeah and reclaiming that part of us yeah which hasn't been defiled by all the experiences of life that can, mandates yeah you know right yeah well, so you're going to do a live art piece at the gala. You do mm -hmm. sessions. And let's say someone's at the gala or let's say someone sees you doing your work. How would you like people to engage with you at that moment, with your art, with you? Just take it to that place. Hmm. I would like people to just... Um... Just be present with it and just kind of try to drink it in 
Um, look at the messages they're seeing. If if there's uh, messages that are you know coming up at that moment, um, and just see how they how it makes them feel. Yeah. I I love people to feel. Um, you know, a lot of people look at my artwork um, and they, they they are almost giddy. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's That's so much. That's definitely the vibe I get. Yeah. Like excitement, so like fun. I want and... people to be excited and delighted and uplifted by yeah. what I do. There's also some surprise, especially in the way of the video, because mm -hmm. it's, you know, time lapsed. And you never know like what it's gonna say. Like it's just like happening quickly. I, I love that idea right. of the the kind of the unknown part of it, you right. know, in the in the video. Right. I know and in live, it will probably be easier to drink in that because you'll be actually painting live. Um, so that's awesome. I'm so looking forward to seeing your work and seeing you and meeting you live at the gala. And I always like to ask if you would ever like to collaborate or I know I haven't really talked much about my work to you, even on the calls. Um, oh, I read some things. Oh, did you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Right on. I I read some things in your uh, on your website about music, mm -hmm. which excites me. We haven't talked about this yet, but I I also write songs. And. I, uh, at the retreat center, I have a friend who has actually taken some of my songs and produced them into final finished versions. Mm -hmm. And, um, but he's, he's one of our administrators and um, most of the time tends to be too busy to be able to do that kind of stuff. And I would love uh, the thought of um, collaborating musically Oh, I would love that too. Really I mean, what I have going on is I write these poems in Urdu and mm -hmm. it basically is my way to reconnect with my heritage and learn my language in a an artistic way, which is how I learn pretty much. Okay. And, you know, like the thing is that sometimes what I've learned about this is that you don't have to necessarily know the exact meaning of something to actually understand it in the heart you know mm -hmm. so that's where I'm going with my with my Urdu so mm -hmm. a lot of people that are interested in it seem to not even really need a literal translation of it okay. um but yeah it would be kind of cool to like I'm working on a poem right now that doesn't have uh any sounds to it it's just like written and I that there, it's a twin of another poem. The poem that I'm doing at the gala is the twin of this one that I'm telling you about. Okay. But the one I'm doing at the gala, I've put my own sounds with and everything. And it has a very, I wouldn't say, I don't know. It, it, I want the other one, you know how twins can be very different. So I want that other sure. one to be just very different than this one, even though they're twins in okay. a way. <laughs> so maybe I can read it for you or something at some point and we can see what comes up for you musically. Okay. That'd All be right. so exciting. That would be fun. Yes. Great. Well, is there anything else you'd like people to know about you that we haven't talked about? I know there's so much more about you and your art that you could share. So is there anything else you'd like to know uh, us to know? Oh, goodness. Um, you know, there was there was something that occurred to me earlier that I wanted to make sure I mentioned, but now I can't think of it. That's all right. Uh, um, yeah, just I'm on a I'm on a mission to heal and to help others heal and spread love in the world. And uh I have, I, I much more think of myself as uh, an earthling than an American. I mean, I don't really, I'm, I'm much, much more of a global thinker. And I, I truly consider the whole human race family. 
Mm -hmm. John's and, like that too. John yeah. is like that very much. So yeah. I, I can understand how you resonated with each other and, you know, and how he introduced you to me as well, because yes. I, my art's about healing as well. I believe, I believe artists and creative people are some of the most important healers of humanity. Right. Well, I never used to really see it that way, but it's almost like we have the ability to just go into it instead of abstract it. Mm -hmm. Like we can go into that feeling, into that moment, or at least that's how I feel. Like I don't, I don't necessarily need to talk about it or debate or anything mm -hmm. like that. I, I can just go into that moment and then that's what it, the conveyance is. So maybe mm -hmm. that's how artists are different. Sure. You know, because I mean, I think there's so many ways to approach healing, right? There's so many ways to approach healing, even from a medical wellness perspective. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that with art, you're taking it into a space that doesn't have to be so defined. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I think any any kind of creative flow that we get into uh, where we're present and feeling connected to our our creativity, every moment of that is healing for the heart and the mind, I believe. And, yeah, and then I would agree with that. Time, each time we something something mucky that's buried under layers comes up and gets expressed and released we're lighter mm -hmm. we lighter presence in the world and we're more authentic and that in itself i believe is part of this uh part of helping everything heal <laughs> yeah you know, yeah, it, like start, it starts a, inside each of us. Right, right. Has, like, like having the conversation in a way that's kind of a different take on it. Mm -hmm. You know, like we can have conversations just one-on-one -on -one like this, or we can make an art project and then people have their own way of interpreting it. Mm -hmm. But just... Just your presence in the world is a healing, healing force. That's a really cool concept. I don't know how many people actually feel that way. I do. You there's feel a, that way? There's at least one. I feel like every time I complete a piece, I'm well, lighter. I mean, what I meant was like, even if you don't make a piece, if you're not an artist, you're talking oh. about just mm -hmm. your presence on mm -hmm. this earth is good. It's just perfect, right? That's what you said. Is that what you meant? Um, well, I was referring to, um, uh, you know, we we shine our light when we're around anybody, mm -hmm. um, and the the more authentic we become and the creativity is a vehicle for that the more authentic we are interacting in the world the brighter our light is and people notice that yeah i guess i'm also whenever like you know, like an authentic experience can also be something very negative and oh, also well, very sure. like tragic and people can express that too. But how much um, validation does that get? Oh, I think that gets validation. I think um, you mean like when um, you mean when someone's doing artwork and negative things are coming up for them? Or even if they're not. Okay. Let's say they're just in an e expressing in a negative space, whatever that might be. Okay. Drug addiction, whatever. You know, think of all the vices 
that's still expression, right? But it's considered in a negative okay. space. Um, what if we looked at that without judgment? Right. That's what I'm trying to get at. Allow, you know, a, people's path in life may have a whole lot of what seem like detours. But I I always remind myself this when I'm in a hard space, this isn't a detour. This is part of my path that I need to go through. And it's teaching me things. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Helping me in a million ways. And um, when I have experiences that that trigger my trauma in some way and bring things up, I, once I, you know, uh, realize what's going on, I, I really look and value those experiences for bringing those things up. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be uh, horrible to go through in the moment, but if it's, if it's, if something in the present is because of its energy dynamic linking to something, I still have trauma around and it brings that up. Mm -hmm. It's a blessing every time uh, yeah. because we need those things to be brought up if yeah. we're going to do anything about them. Other, you For know, sure. I don't, I don't want all those things that are still there to stay buried. I, I want them to come up so I can clear them. Mm -hmm. But it's it can be very painful. But. Yeah, I guess what I, I'm life. still alluding to are, are people who don't have the creative outlet, like people who don't have the way of expression that you have, you know, or that someone else has that channel. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Because when you well, said earlier, when you said just you are enough or just your presence is healing. I, mean, I wonder I talking, how many I was talking to you. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. And I wonder though, how many people feel that way though? Like, do people really feel that they're enough in general? Well, I want everyone to know that they are enough. Right. You said it. And it was extremely validating. And how many people feel like that? Just curious. Not... Unfortunately, not not too many. Not too many. Mm -hmm. You know, most most people in the world, I think, are, you know, we all we all see the world through the filter of our experiences and everything that's happened to us. Sure. Um, and I one of one of my one of my strongest, most absolute beliefs in life is that, we live in an infinitely intelligent universe mm -hmm. that has a plan for every single one of us and it will guide each one of us in our own time out of the muck and bring us back into the truth of the magnificence that we are. Do you think that can happen in one lifetime or do you think it sometimes takes well, people more? I think most of the time it takes more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, I, I guess it can be done in one lifetime. Some people have said that. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, rather than even having that as a goal, oh, I want to clear all of this in this lifetime. I would rather just, you know, take it moment by moment and all I can do is my best every moment. Take what you're given and work with that, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's beautiful. I am so thankful that John introduced us. Me too. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to meeting you, seeing your work, working with you. Um, yes. Yeah. I I think this is this is a great, a great new budding relationship, and I'm thankful for it. Me too. So, I can't wait to see you in person. I have a big hug for you. I do too. I'm a There's I'm a, a big bear one. hugger. Awesome. Cool. 
Well, then we will see you. I, I believe I will be there on the 12th, February, or no, May 12th. Okay. So yeah. I'll be there the day after. I won't be able to see your live, but hopefully you can record it. Yeah, I will. And then we maybe will do a part two interview of you while I'm out there. Oh, sweet. Yeah, if you're up for it. Sweet. Because yeah, you'll be there I, for the whole weekend, right? That's my plan. I'm going to get there the night before and stay through the entire gala. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Yes. Well, thank you so much for your time and your thank art. You. Your beautiful contributions are so uplifting and yeah. very positive so i can't wait to see you and your work in person and your jewelry thank you for doing this i i have never been interviewed about this so it's oh. very very exciting it is have, it is fun you know it's happen. fun to just take a moment and really like get to know someone and then yeah. realize kind of like after the fact that other people are going to see it at some point yeah so yeah a lot of wonderful things have been just happening without effort recently and this it's your affirmations <laughs> this was this was definitely uh an unexpected thing that is delightful so thank yes. you yes well you're so welcome cool well have a great rest of your day thank you take care namaste thank you namaste